<laughs> What's up, Sakpase y que tal, mis amigos? This is your boy, Jam, and today we finished watching the full season of Netflix live action Avatar, The Last Airbender. If you have never seen the animated series, you probably could just hop into the live action and enjoy it no problem. However, if you have seen it, you probably get stuck trying to compare and contrast, and that's where you start to lose some enjoyment. So my suggestion is to think of it like how a great story told by different authors would have slight differences in details, but we'll still get to the same point. After all, they're trying to combine a full season's worth of animated goodness into eight episodes and still tell the story. Either way, here are some things that stood out to me as I watched the episode. Some of the things that were different from the actual animated series and some of the things that just popped up to me as important to mention. It started off pretty tough. The first episode had decent CGI, pacing was cool if you're not trying to compare it to the animated series. And overall, it got me hooked into wanting to watch the rest of the season. Then we hop over to episode two where Aang reveals he is actively holding back his powers to make sure he doesn't hurt anybody. But I did have to train, not to develop my powers, but to keep them under control. Which is similar to like Spider-Man and Superman and heroes the like. <laughs> I'm sorry. In the animated series, he did have a similar problem with using firebending because he viewed it as something that was more attack than defense and meant to hurt. But in this show, they decided to just off the bat make him even hold back his airbending powers for the same reason. Which I guess they made a decision to do because in this show, they didn't really show him learning any other bending principles. Fast forward and the story pretty much goes bar for bar like the animated series, but the Cliff Notes version. But I do have to stop for one second to give a shout out to Shorty when she did the face reveal. Because if you thought the Kyoshi Warriors was bad, <laughs> you'd be right. And of course I gotta mention Shorty's mom because she was a complete badass the way she flung dude. had me on the edge of my seat. And just a few moments later, Avatar Kyoshi came in in the flesh. And I was like, that's tough. And again, watching the animated series before watching the live action may or may not affect your level of enjoyment just based off of knowing what's going to happen. Some of the joy of watching the show was wondering what could happen next to this group that we are falling in love with and then boom surprise but in this show you're kind of expecting what's going to happen for me some of these expected things still work but when they throw in a little surprise which is why i don't mind when they change things just a little bit it adds to the value so i try not to compare it in a sense like it's law this has to happen beat for beat and instead enjoy it as it is as its own standalone version of the same story. Even if you look at cutesy fairy tale stories like Hansel and Gretel, if you compare the ones we've watched growing up to the original Brothers Grimm's German stories, it's a lot more graphic than you'd remember. But as long as you get the message and overall tone of the story out, is it that big of a problem? Speaking of problems, let's move on to episode 3 where they finally reveal Azula. And I want to say how disappointed I was when I saw her not so cool reveal. She, she, I, I will say they got me when she first snuck in with the group and pretended to be a villager that happens to work at the palace. Okay, but then they showed her standing next to the guys with her long hair. Then she pulls off this fake hair hat thing just to reveal her long hair. It, it was like, okay, I didn't know who you were because your hair was a little, like, it, it was just, I feel like they could have done better. Also, she looks too nice for my liking. I know her character is supposed to be cold and, and vicious, and in the animated series, obviously, they drew her a little bit more thin-framed face just to make her kind of, like, angular and sharp but in here like the the circle shape of her face just makes her look so cute i just want to squeeze her cheeks and so it's just like a little uh disheartening to see her be mean when she looks so cutesy like chubby whoppy you feel what i'm saying but hey as long as the acting is good i could i could you know the more i watch the show the the less i'm thinking about her chubby whoppy face <laughs> 
But see, but the other things that made me laugh, they brought back Cabbage Man. I was waiting to see him. Like I was like, if they don't show Cabbage Man, we gonna have some problems. You feel what I'm saying? But they brought him, and uh, they brought him a couple of times actually. And the first time I seen him, I was expecting him to completely destroy his car. They didn't, and I was still like, but at least they brought Cabbage Man. I was happy to see him. And then later on, they destroyed his car, which made me even happier. That sounds bad, but it's just like. A little Easter egg for anybody who's watched the animated show. If you haven't watched the animated show, you may just be like, dang, they do not care. But you're right. They don't care. <laughs> they just keep harassing this man. And it keeps going. So if they continue the series into more and more seasons, like I don't know if they've pre-approved for other seasons, I'm pretty sure we're going to see more of Cabbage Man. Now let's talk about the reveal of May and Ty Lee. They looked meh to me as well. It was, it was the same as the Azula reveal. When I saw them, I was like, oh, that's... Time. okay i see what you did there i know they're trying so hard to make sure that things whitewashed but me personally i wouldn't have been upset if ty lee was a european character a white character or anything like that and i know she's still you know what i'm saying part of the culture so they did right by casting one of the cultured members but i just i just feel like in the show she was more at least like americanized in acting or, or in personality. I feel like they also could have browned her hair a bit just to give her a different look from the other characters. And I know her outfit, it, it just looked kind of like they were in cosplay. Like she just had the fit on and just stood there. She wasn't as bubbly as she was in the show. And then they revealed that they all were already together versus uh, giving Azula her little quest of going to collect her friends from what they're doing you know disrupting whatever lives they were already had here they just look like they're part of her court and they just happen to be there always and forever so i just wish they just dived into them just to pause <laughs> well no pause you know what i'm saying but anyways i just wish they delved deeper into their story and i know because of timing some things have to get cut out but the look and the personality and not giving them any extra depth they just made the mess to me i didn't hate them but the whole crew, that trio, Azula, Mai, Mei, Tylee, I was underwhelmed by all three of them. Who are you people? <laughs> Patrick, who are you people? <laughs> and like I said earlier, here we go, the cabbage on fire. It seems like something small, but if they did not add this in the show, I My cabbage! Yeah! I'm pretty sure the fan base would revolt off this alone. You gotta see the cabbage man suffer. I don't know why we're like this, but we are. Now, the next difference that I gotta point out. We meet King Boomy for the first time, and it's another underwhelming scene. First of all, that is not how you met him in the animated series, and I know I said earlier that we gotta kind of stop comparing to the animated series, but the animated series just did it so right. First of all, he was already trapped, and we'll talk about later on how he gets trapped, but at the same time in the animated series, they thinking they gotta save him, and they find out, oh, he's capable, he's just doing nothing if you know you know but outside of comparing him we already saw the preview on social media before the show was released and we already saw how he looked it's like they they're trying so hard to make him look old but they still needed a younger person to play the role because of the extensive work that he's going to do but it's like the old people makeup just looks very cosplay is like it's like clear that oh you see his face he, he's not old they just put something on his face and it's like i don't know if they could have done uh better cgi and just aged him up or if they could have hired an old actor and put that person's face on a younger body or i i don't know because you know they do a lot of things already and we don't know what kind of budget they work with we don't, we don't know what it takes to do some of the things that we'd be requesting but we just know when something looks bad and and he didn't look old as old as they're like trying to make him look and then his facial i i could tell he was it, it's just look either you're going to try to go with the animated series you know what i'm saying and and people can be upset when you drop the ball and don't go with the animated series or you can go in your own direction and not look like you're trying to copy it because it just seemed like the actor was given King Boomy footage and said this is the facial expression he's making and he's trying to copy it and it just was like it just it just King Boomy was trash. There's there's no other way to say it. King Boomy was trash. But 
I tried to like just ignore his face for as much as possible and then it, it's just unenjoyable to see him on the screen. The story was cool. I like that they dug deeper into his story, his relationship with Aang, um, but the execution was just meh, meh. You know what I'm saying? Man. But you know, one thing I will say is the reason that a lot of these things look man is because it's surrounded by so much good. Because the CGI for that fight was meh. But then immediately after we go into the cave in Omashu and they're giving us the tail, that animation was so well done. Like on the cave wall, they show like the how did Omashu get created as Omashu, the two different factions that was at war, the lovers, Oma and Shu, and then the badger. Like the, the animation was tough. And then immediately after we go into the tunnels and we meet the badger mole and the CGI for the badger mole. Mm, chef's kiss see i gotta give props when they do just like i gotta say mm, they dropped the ball here i gotta say this when they shot it and it went nothing but net because the badger mode cgi was was chef's kiss like it was on another level i don't know if it was the pixels on my screen that was like they did good fast forward to the next episode it's called spirited away i can't see the word spirited away and not think studio ghibli and i don't know if there was a connection there i gotta go back to anime series to see if there was an episode literally called spirited away or not but in my mind this is a shout out to studio ghibli and the spirited away and before we move any further let me just say this here because i keep mentioning the characters that i'm like was man i didn't like uh may or my ty lee uh azula whatever casting but you know who had it perfect i'm talking about perfect Sokka. that's my favorite character Clap it up for Sokka. You know who else, though? It's not just Sokka. Fire Lord Ozai. Perfect casting. Both in the build, even the face structure. Like, I looked at him, and I'm like, that's Fire Lord. That's the Fire Lord. And the and the, the acting, the look, everything. Perfect. But there is one more character that I haven't really seen many people mention as perfect. But, like, you look at her, this is the character. June. The bounty hunter, the mercenary, she looks exactly how I expect her to look. Shout out to Arden Cho because I've seen her play girly, ditzy, not ditzy, but like, what's happening? I've seen her in a Teen Wolf. I've seen her in some uh, nigga higa videos because, you know, they used to, they, I don't know what they what their relationship says now. But like I've seen her be girly and I've seen her be just like kind of rebel rebellious. And now I'm seeing her as, as June and she embodied the role both in the way she looked the, the way they dressed her, the way she acting cold, she was June. So the three, my three favorite casting choices was Sokka, Fire Lord, Ozai, and June. Hands down. But back to the story, Sokka and Katara, they actually go into the spirit world with Aang, which is completely different from the animated series. In the animated series, it's only Aang, and here they come as well, and so they're experiencing certain things that they didn't experience in the animated series. I don't hate it, except for the fact it makes it feel that Aang's motivation isn't necessarily just helping the people that he went in to save. It's more like, but my friends were caught too, so I definitely got to help them. And I think character-wise, it kind of takes away from Aang just like being dedicated to helping any and every body. Then they took away the whole fact that he had to do the still face so the guy won't steal his face. When he goes against the demon guy, if he makes an expression, they're going to steal his face. They skipped that and they kind of changed it up where it's like, oh, go find me. Say I'm on a side quest. Go on this side quest. If you bring me back this, then I'll give you your friends and the villagers back. Like, And then the villagers go by him and he just like, I don't care. Uh, uh, Sokka, Katara, oh, those are the people I did this for, and I think it takes away from the from the Avatar's character, or you might say it adds to it because he's still human, he's still a kid who's formed relationships, and he cares about his relationships more than he cares about other people, I guess, which is a normal human thing, but mm, just some small differences. I'm not here to say that the differences that are in the live action versus the animated are right or wrong. They're just differences and I'm just pointing them out. How is that possible? Another difference that I noticed is Azula's insecurities. You're perfect. It's not good enough. 
Because yes, we know Azula was gung-ho and competing against her brother and showing that she is the superior one and she is just vicious. But the tone in the animated series is that she's already the favorite and she's already, you know, that chick and everybody's backing her and Prince Zuko is the underdog that's like, please accept me. And she's like, ha, huh, why would they accept you? But in this show, they kind of play it as if that she's trying to prove herself to her dad and her dad treats her like shit as well. And you might say he's doing it just like later on they mention another character mentions that, oh, they're trying to use you as her motivation. You're the fire that's making her sword. But to me, it's almost as if she hasn't quite proven herself all the way yet. I don't know if it's because her dad is sexist, so he's disappointed in his son, but also sexist, so hoping that his son could outdo his daughter. I don't know. But what I do know is, you know, they really focus on her seeking for her dad's approval and him being like, you're all right, I guess, and her being upset about it and even going as far as sweating in camera, kind of like, I hope I can, oh my gosh. And in the show, they didn't show her being vulnerable like that. In the animated series, they didn't show her being vulnerable in the sense of like, oh my gosh, what if I don't please my dad? You know, they just make her automatically know that she's that chick, you feel what I'm saying? So I thought that was interesting in the way they played that out. Fast forward, next episode, we got the mask, uh, the blue mask, saving Aang, and that choreography with that duo. <laughs> Like when he first climbed on his back and yo, it felt like Mortal Kombat. Am I wearing a Mortal Kombat shirt? Hold on. Hold on. Bam. It felt like Mortal Kombat. You feel what I'm saying? When you the you know the new game when you could use a, a, a teammate to come help you and assist. Oh. <laughs> mm, I was on the edge of my seat again. I'm realizing that the show is almost done and I'm like, there's certain things I haven't seen happen yet. First of all, I was hoping we got to see Toph. And I know, I know they're trying to bring her on later in the story or if they change it at all, they know their show's gonna get canceled because we need Toph. But they done went to the to the uh, homage shooting and went to the, the kingdom and I know they don't meet her until after Boomy is captured. But now that we've seen Boomy, now I need some Toph. You can't show me Earthbenders and not think that I'm going to not think about Toph. Point blank, period. Then we go into the flashback, Zuko versus his dad. And I knew this was coming because obviously it happens in the animated series. Another thing that I told you that could be a problem if you watch the animated series, you know what's coming. So you may or may not like when they deviate, which means it keeps you on the edge of your seat, but at the same time, you know the overall arc. So we know how Zuko got his scar, but seeing it, oh my God. That was another well done. The choreography was beautiful. <laughs> He actually gets into the fight and fights back. It's beautiful. And, it, and it's sad to see that, oh, the reason I scarred you is because you showed mercy to me, your father. Like, bro, like, I know you're trying to create soldiers that's, that's going to do the thing regardless of who they're going up against. But at the same time, do you want them to usurp you? Like, bro, if he's the type to have burnt you or beat you, imagine he beat up the Fire Lord. <laughs> like, that's a lose-lose. First of all, that's his dad, his daddy. Secondly, he's the Fire Lord. Thirdly, what would happen if he beat up the Fire Lord? Would he then become the Fire Lord? Would, would his dad say, you can't stop until you kill me? Like, well, there's no winning. This fight was a setup from the beginning. And again, that's all part of the story. So it's not like the live action changed up something. And that's why I'm complaining. I'm just complaining because why are they treating Zuko this way? You know what? Zuko's grown on me. Add him to the casting list. Well, no, okay. Well, I like Zuko. I don't think he's eh like the some of the other characters that's done. But he can't be one of the top three casting choices. It's still Sokka, Fire Lord, and uh, June. Speaking of casting choices, I do love the actor that's playing Uncle Iroh. But... I wish he would slow down when speaking, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Uncle Iroh, you, he's supposed to be that one guy that is spitting up some knowledge that you're like, damn, I should probably listen, one, out of respect, and two, because he's spitting some bars. But, oh my gosh, he's so slow speaking and long-winded. Like, speaking like Confucius, say this. Then you're like, bro, just get to, yo, I'm trying to move. But here, he just... 
hey yo don't you know yo do you think we should do this i'm like bro slow down you know what I'm saying? Just slow down. But other than that, I liked um, Uncle Iroh. And when I first seen him, it was a little jarring trying to accept him as Uncle Iroh. You know what I'm saying? But uh, as the show goes on, that he, he, he did his thing. That's Uncle Iroh. Fast forward to episode seven. Oh my God, it's almost over. <laughs> this is actually a good sign that I'm feeling this way this far into the series. I binge watched it all in one setting and you think I would be tired of it. The fact that I'm like, no, it's almost over is a good thing. It means the show overall is pretty good. I don't care what anybody's saying, I'm enjoying this show. I sort of wish that Zuko and that Admiral did have that Agni Kai battle that they had in the animated series. They skipped it and I thought that they weren't going to have their battle. Later on, they do show them actually getting their one-on-one, -on -one, but the difference is in this, they force them to work together a lot longer before it gets to that point. And um, that was cool. The only thing that was surprising was that he tried to kill Zuko with some blasting jelly. And I was like, damn, okay. So they really changing things up because in the show it was just straight up, I don't like you, I don't like you. All right, well, Agni Kai, boom, we fight, I win, keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? And he tries to do some underhanded thing and then Uncle Iroh steps in just like they do in this show. The difference being is this isn't like a formal, yo, I want them ones. It was more like, yo, we just fighting and everything happens versus in the animated series where they like okay honorable fight and then he does a dishonorable thing so it's just a small difference but it was just interesting to see that he actually tried to kill prince zuko with some blasting jelly in the middle of the water boy this dude was sneaky but we fast forward and we meet master paku okay at first glance i thought ill it's just this old man makeup that this show just hasn't mastered. And then later on, as I see his face more and more, it stops looking like old people makeup. And he he, he starts embracing the hair definitely looks fake, but but you know, a lot of the hair is like obviously the hairstyles is gonna be done up, so it, it's okay. But the face starts to look more and more realistic. I don't know if I just got used to it or they actually changed up the makeup throughout the episode but i started accepting him as paku but for some reason boomy no matter how long i looked at him he just ugh. but anyways master paku i was thinking that they were gonna take away his sexism his like women don't fight in the battlefield just like they said they removed it from Sokka. and i was actually like oh my gosh here we go so nobody can be that way and then grow the whole point of them feeling one way and then change their mind is showing character development but they they kept it in they just made it more subtle at first when he was like oh yeah we'll start your training just go here and then she goes training and she's like where is the you know what i'm saying so I, I will say i did enjoy that they kept it that women are not supposed to fight and then she shows them like nah and then they kept that fight between them like it, it was it was well done it was tastefully done so i did enjoy that so outside of his first impression when i was like ew old man face is not looking like old man face after that that whole little arc was perfection and, let, and let's go to Sokka, who's rizzing everybody up every city he goes to he's like <laughs> what's the word baby and then the girls look right back at him like uh but in this particular session i gotta say technically he's the one who's getting rizzed up because shorty was like he is everything that a girl could want but he is not the boy of my dreams like bro like when i say the pacing is fast it is fast because <laughs> they literally just get to it then we wrap up the season with episode eight and I'm over here thinking like, what are they gonna do to, to like, you know, put it all together? They have the battle at the Northern Warther tribe and it, 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 it gets intense and all the beats are hit and I really have no complaints. I really have no complaints. The only thing I will say is that I wish that we went further so I could meet Toph. I want Toph, okay? And every time I saw a little girl pop up, I'm like, is it? Tough, is it tough? She don't look like tough, but I could, I could, I could accept her as. The, oh no, you're just a somebody's daughter who's who's missing her brother. Okay, my bad, my bad. Oh, is this tough? But but other than that, overall, 
I don't know what people's complaining about. I enjoyed the show. Again, if you've watched the animated series and you're comparing it to the live action, there are a couple of reasons why you wouldn't like it because it's not happening exactly how you remember it too. But it doesn't need to, in my humble opinion. It doesn't need to. Secondly, you're knowing everything that's going to happen, so there's no element of surprise. If you're watching this for the first time, this is your first exposure to the series, you will not know what's going to happen. And then, so boom, oh my God really but if you know exactly what's happening you know the blueprint it's it, it 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 takes away some of that element of excitement for some people me personally i had to keep reminding myself mm, this is not the series if you watch my uh, recap reaction to the first episode that i posted uh, i'll put the link the little tag up here you'll see i kept having to literally tell myself okay don't compare it to the show don't compare the show to the show just watch it and enjoy it so that's what i was actively having to do and i advise you to do the same because the show itself is pretty enjoyable it's not bad for every bad cgi they had they had great cgi for every bad actor that they had well not bad actor bad casting choice i feel they made they made a few greater casting choices so it, it, it balances out is i wouldn't say it's the best thing oh my gosh you should watch it because if you don't what is wrong with you you know nothing like that but if you're saying oh man it's shit and they could never do live action properly i think you're wrong because this was actually valid but yeah man if you've watched the show, tell me what you think of it and what other things that I missed. I may go and do an Easter egg hunt on the series, go back and rewatch it and try to find everything that is either Easter eggy, find everything that's different because this was just what I noticed as I watched through. I may go in with a fine tooth comb if that's what you guys want to see. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see more Avatar The Last Airbender content from me or if you, you're good. You're ready for the next thing. <laughs> and that's okay as well. But like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what's the word. We're on the road to 1K on this particular channel. Um, yeah. And until next time, ciao. I've been up since like 3 a.m. I don't hear the hate. What y'all say ain't in. All I know is go. All I know is grind. I'm on your head. All I know is climb. Just know I'm different. If I see the targets, just know I'm going to hit it. I don't know the fake. Just know I live it. Anything I say, just know I'm in it. I know the ops and they lightweight I'm in the zone and I might stay Yeah, I'm on in the right way Check the scoreboard, look why I play They say sky the limit, that's too low for us We showing up in the nosebleeds of the galaxy When you think it's great, look, it's actually me Yeah, it's actually me